<laughs> Still no sign of Dick. Sorry. <laughs> After a while, it's a cursed eat. <laughs> Begins to play tricks on a chap's mind. Rest assured, I'll fulfill my quest to bring you Auntie's Natural Bloom as a selection of astonishing moments from the BBC's internationally acclaimed Natural History Unit involving some of the world's most amazing animals, augmented by some rather less surprising incidents featuring nearly all of the BBC's most naive presenters. <laughs> so we may be here sometime. With Christmas less than a week away and snow very definitely in the air, my team of five bloodhounds are really keen for the off. But before we get going, Take a look at this gorgeous backdrop. Isn't it heavenly? Hampton Court Palace is its absolute best. Now, this is just the start of the programme. We'll be travelling all over London for the rest of our games, returning to this neck of the woods for our auction at the end of the programme. <laughs> Where is it at the moment? Right. <laughs> You may recall we had Nick Faldo and Lee Westwood out on the 16th green against Jeff Maggot and Justin Leonard. Faldo and Westwood were two ahead when the Americans somewhat controversially called a halt to proceedings in the fading light of yesterday evening. Mm. When they resumed this morning, both sides had putts for birdie threes. The Americans didn't make theirs, but here's Lee Westwood with a chance of European victory, three and two. If that fly doesn't get off the end of my <laughs> no. <laughs> Apes, what is it called? <laughs> it's me. It's the ostrich's rapid adaption to New Zealand's climate and conditions that's inspired local scientists and farmers and to re... Oh, sorry. It's the ostrich's rapid adaption to New Zealand's climate and conditions that's inspired local scientists and farmers and to re... Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> it's the ostrich's rapid adaption to New Zealand's climate and conditions that's inspired local scientists and farmers Taking ostrich farming one giant step. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe if you just point it a little bit further. Yeah, that's it. He's just pooed on me, I think. <laughs> the ostrich can't fly, but it can run at 50 miles an hour, and ostrich races have become a tourist attraction. Believe me, it's not as easy as it looks. Whoa! Okay, oh! <laughs> Uh, just as well, then, that I'm, as you can see, dressed and equipped with a task in hand, with a suit intercepted on its way back from Sir David Attenborough's dry cleaners, <laughs> and admittedly, let out a tuck here and there, <laughs> kitchen knife borrowed from Delia Smith. Can't help thinking she's getting a little carried away these days. <laughs> It'll be the competition. And, of course, she's not the only one. Just look at these bright-eyed and bushy-tailed types. Throughout the animal world, it really is a case of waste not, want not. Regular viewers of the BBC's natural history programmes won't need me to tell them that the animal world is a constant source of amazement. Out there, there are more remarkable things going on than you, I, or even the scriptwriter who brought Bobby Ewing back from the dead <laughs> would ever be. It's the Penguin Evening Rush Hour. 
to get onto a beach where there's now a competition for space. But they pay no attention to the crowds as they must get home with supper. Every otter has its own technique for opening shells. Some even carry a favorite rock around with them when they're feeding. Anything that lives here has to cope with the rise and fall of the tide. Mudskippers are fish, but fish that can walk on land. This young female is trying to anchor herself in seaweed, but she's chosen eel grass rather than kelp, and it's not securely attached to the rocks. Eelgrass, as an anchor, has its shortcomings. Hooded seals are capelin eaters. And the males have a remarkable way of showing off. precious little about these weird and wonderful seals. As the eagles push their stunt flying to the limit, they make contact, talons lock, and the eagles spiral. These spectacular contests are highly ritualized, and talon grappling has become one of the most astonishing displays of aerobatics in the natural world. Cartwheeling is a game of dare that can end in death, the ultimate test of nerve. They're no longer home and dry in burrows that saw them snugly through the winter. In fact, it's a pretty miserable time. All they can do now is make the best of a bad hair day. <laughs> A jackal biting a bear's bottom? In all my time in India, I've never seen anything like this before. I'm saying that the DNA, whatever that means, of a chimpanzee, is something like 98% identical to that of a human being. And this comes as no surprise to anyone who's ever seen the controller of programs eat a banana, but it does suggest that we could look on what follows less as fascinating primate behaviour, more as highlights from the family album. The purpose of the centre is to return them to the wild. Yet despite this, orangutans turn up every day to share the camp chores. This animal seems to have learned how to do the washing. Whatever their man-made problems, bonobos are well equipped to deal with anything that their natural environment throws at them. They can even make an umbrella. They don't enjoy a soaking 
any more than we do. Do these wild baboons in Kenya have a sense of their own existence? Are they able to think about themselves? The baboons regularly visit this rubbish tip. They're fascinated by the mirrors. When we look in a mirror, we recognize the mirror image as ourselves. Perhaps baboons do too. How can the chimps reach the banana, their favorite food? Will they resort to trial and error? Or can they imagine a solution through insight and so get the banana straight away? I spoke earlier, fellow travellers, of the reputation enjoyed and earned by the BBC's Natural History Unit. It's fair to say that one broadcaster, by dint of his passion, vision, clarity, has done more than any other to spread knowledge and concern for the world's animals and plants. But even this important work has its funny side. Here then, some of the, the lighter moments from the career of Sir David Attenborough. It's so effective that even a rich woodland like this can seem totally devoid of birds. But that, that's a completely different sound. That's an aeroplane. The dynasty of true birds was founded and they began to compete in the skies with the flying reptiles, the pterosaurs. After a hundred million years... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Their tongues, instead of being rather leathery... Oh! I'm on Earl Howe Island. I'm not, I'm on Lord Howe Island. We'll start again. Welcome to the first news from the zoos from inside the Soviet Union. Our opportunity of coming here to the Moscow Zoo came rather unexpectedly, and unfortunately your normal host, James Fisher, couldn't be here, so I've got the pleasure of being his substitute. Babies play in order to learn to exercise their muscles, for the jobs that they're going to need later on in life. And this lad, you see, is learning how to growl in his... Look at him, look at him. <laughs> the volcanoes of today are mere feeble flicks. <laughs> 1066, take three and one. That's my message. And there's a reply. I'm talking to a mole rat. And, and what it is, is, is bats packed tight on the roof here. And the, the stench of ammonia is really very powerful indeed. This cave, this particular part of it, oh, make oh, ammonia is really quite, quite choking. Two, take four. <laughs> These ants have oh, have a particularly vicious bite, as I well know. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> the surface of the earth is the coolest place in the entire colony and it draws down the hot stale air from above oh, I'm being bitten. Oh. <laughs> and from 
draws it down from above, down these deep, long chimneys which extend right up the side. Sorry, David, cut. Uh, we'll have to do it again. We couldn't see you. It's now at its maximum weight. In fact, it's heavier even <laughs> than heavier than the adult. They move around in a flock, scratching around for what they can get. Apparently... Cut. Cut. I've got sweat in my eyes, I just can't see. I burned my thumb. Yes. <laughs> mm. And they are remarkably sweet and delicious. And also gritty. <laughs> Some creatures have managed to overcome the forces of gravity so well that they managed to launch themselves into the air and so uh, fly. What bird has the most beautiful? <laughs> Indeed, it's a repetition of that over countless generations that has led to this extravagance. <laughs> This is a cock capacari. And as you can see, he is very charged up. There is some life actually within this snowfield itself. Because this snow is not white. Off now, amigos, for some of the most astonishing moments captured by the BBC's wildlife campus. Take flight into the fascinating world of birds. A little more mind leaf clearing. Mounting excitement in the dress circle. And now the performance begins. uncharacteristic signs of, of nervousness just now. I, I've aged so much since this program began, I've probably evolved. The thing is, in the natural world, you can never be quite sure what to expect.
golden mole. This tiny hunter is blind. Eyes are a hindrance if you burrow in loose sand. But its hidden ears can detect minute vibrations from creatures like termites. By plunging its head in the sand, it homes in on them far across the desert. His mother doesn't appear too worried. The youngster's unhurt. His fall has been broken by the same plant that will support him throughout his life, bamboo. Now with the monsoon season almost upon us, time I was making tracks upriver. If indeed it's possible to make tracks. Upper River. I don't write this rubbish, you know. Before we go, a reminder of those broadcasting lives into which a little rain has already fallen when mixing with animals. It's only three miles long, but it's famous because it's the only place in Europe that you can find wild monkeys. And there they were. <laughs> it's only three miles long, but it's famous because it's the only place in Europe that you can find wild monkeys. Right, move along there. Move along. Keep moving. Move along. Move along. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's only three miles long, but it's famous because it's the only place in Europe that you can find wild monkeys. And here they are, Gibraltar's famous rock apes. You actually don't have to look very hard for them. All you do is turn up with a bit of fruit and they very quickly find you. Hello. <laughs> Storms play a vital role in the workings of our woodlands, acting as kind of natural thinning process. But it's a very different matter when it comes. <laughs> By contrast, Frodo is completely unaffected and looking more and more powerful. <laughs> that just leaves the monastery here at Kumjung, and it houses the last of the Yeti relics in the whole region, and it's one of the Sherpa religion's most revered relics. It's meant to be a Yeti scalp. But there's no one in, so we're not going to see it. OK. It's always a privilege to witness the opening moments of one of nature's greatest journeys. But for these turtles, the adventure's just beginning. Um. Buy your torch, buy your torch. And stand uh, up, stand uh, up! Wow! Here's a shot of the bear, background, and buggy going through the foreground. Yep, so you'll be near us, the bear will be behind you. You'll be going right to left through frame. Or left, right, doesn't matter which way. Okay, stand back. Okay, close the windows. Close the door quickly. He's big. <laughs> After you, Bob's. <laughs> Slowly. Oh no. There it is. Well, while we're here in Scotland, we thought. <laughs> No. No. Tap something, click your finger.
Here in Australia, with such a fantastic diversity of monitors, and given that it was only yesterday that a real monster was here, Megalania, perhaps it's not too surprising that some reports of absolutely humongous There are hot springs all over Iceland, but it was phenomenal natural spectacles like this geyser. <laughs> <Huh. laughs> He's recognised himself. <laughs> really? You can tell. Now it's very obvious who's the leader in this particular troop. It's the <laughs> <laughs> Of course, naivety about the animal world is a relative thing. Gabby Roslin won't have it that a zebra isn't a donkey in pyjamas. <laughs> That's Gabby for you. <laughs> and now, with a tear in the eye and something really quite unpleasant under my shoe, it's time for me to hit the old trail, many a mile home, but I have my trusty compass to guide me, and a photograph of Carol Vorderman wearing just her pop socks. <laughs> which to ward off any carnivorous predators. <laughs> I'd be absolutely sure it will scare them. It terrifies me. Big boy, I love you with all my heart. Hero, see ya.